Hello love bit family, every 11 of May is our wedding anniversary and we would like to say thank you to God for bringing us this far since 2011 when we met. It has been a beautiful journey of love together and God has blessed us with three beautiful daughters. To those who made this day a success we want to say thank you and may God bless you all. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you all for our monthly devotion. I am Prince Sammy and today I want to talk to all the men. Our topic for today is the five mandate for the godly man. Our key verse is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 to 14. Let's begin with our first mandate, always be alert. The book of 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 says be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The world is loaded with seducers who are watching, waiting, tempting, and infiltrating your life. Whenever and wherever they get the opportunity, they will attack. The question is, are you aware and alert enough to who or what is on the prowl? From phones, computers, people, work, etc., all kinds of things appeal to men, saying, take a load off. Relax. Let your guard down, it's harmless banter. All the while, the enemy of your soul is planning to take you out. For the pastor, it can be the woman who keeps sending signals. For any man, it could be that woman you are always furling with, it could be the beer located conveniently for the husband, just at the end of the grocery aisle. These seducers are relentless and continuously try to get the man to live a worldly life, or worse, willfully sin against Almighty God. People who live life unaware of what is going on in the world are those I call sleepers. Other men are equally unaware of their surroundings. Guys who typically believe they are the world's center. The preoccupied business guy barges into the office. Oblivious to his co-workers, he continues in a deep conversation on his phone. Neither the self-centered man nor the lazy man is fulfilling his call from God. He isn't even fulfilling the first mandate of manhood, to be alert. The preoccupied businessman has no clue he's about to succumb to being involved with another woman, until one night, he looks around after work and sees it is just the two of them, working together alone in the office. We all know what frequently happens next. Spiritually, this man is very much like a lone gazelle surrounded by a hungry pack of lions. Physically and spiritually, we need to keep our eyes open. The danger is everywhere. It's in the office with the overly flirtatious new assistant. It's at the end of the grocery store aisle in the cooler. It's on the corner of the street in the dope dealer's hand. Being alert helps us to be aware of who we are and our surroundings. I don't believe the Lord is just telling us to be mindful of the dangers. I believe he is saying to be alert to what he is doing in your life to be aware as to who you are and the opportunities God is sending your way. But before we can walk in the glory of God, we must be alert regarding this fallen world and its seductions and overcome them all. The second mandate is to stand firm in the faith. What would you do if you found yourself in Ukraine? Or what would you do if a thief enters your house and asks you to shoot your children and your wife? If you do not they will shoot you and save them. Now you need to answer because the silent and hesitation is too long and I guess you are thinking that their spirit will come at night to start asking you that, daddy why? So I am asking you again would you shoot all your family just to save your life or you would die for them? What do you do? Let me ask you this way, that if you were in Jesus' shoe, would you die to save mankind? I can see your answer is already yes of course I mean those who knows the truth. But why did you take so long? If I asked you what you believe, you would probably have a quick answer. Almost everyone can muster up that. Where I find that people have a big problem is in the follow-up question, why do you believe it? At this point, 
I see a much different reaction from the person who is giving the answer. Some hesitate, while some may blush and awkwardly say, well, because of my mom, dad, denomination, professor, friend, etc. Most, however, don't really know. Following the second question comes the breaking point for many. Why? Because it's hard to stand firm when you don't know what you believe, when you have just adopted someone else's beliefs. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15 says, But in your heart set revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Leadership guru and former pastor, John Maxwell, said it best, decisions are made easy when you know in advance what you stand for. Occurrences like the above are not exaggerated stories except the salvation story. Many of those who put their very lives on the line thought that the people they protected were precious, valuable, and created in the image of God. The decision to stand firm for their beliefs in these critical moments was made clear. The same is true for you today. Staring at Pudding or the thief, what would you say? Do you know what you believe and why you believe it? If you do, don't waver in your belief. To stand firm, you must get into his word. Study it. Apply it. And live it out. The third mandate is to be courageous. We all have an idea of what courage looks like. It's the macho guy in movies that is all that and then some. You've seen him the guy who seems to always show up at the right time, the one who never misses a shot in the game, takes charge of a situation, and seemingly always knows just what to do and say. The most intimidating guy in the office. Right? Wrong. Desmond Doss was a United States Army corporal who was a conscientious objector. Desmond wanted to help in one of the bloodiest wars in history, without a weapon. Instead of taking any life, he became a medic saving lives. Even though Das came under fire by his own commanding officers threatening him with prison time, even after being beaten by his own guys, even after being publicly humiliated by his sergeant, Das wouldn't budge. He stood firm to what he believed. His company considered his refusal to use a gun in combat as putting their lives in danger, so they hated him for it. Das plunged, weaponless, into machine gun and mortar fire. The US was pushed back, but Das refused to take cover. Nonetheless, God convicted him to go ahead. Das went into areas that were regarded to be unsafe for either side, desperately trying to save men. After tending their wounds, he would drag them across the battlefield to the edge of a cliff and lower the injured soldier down to warm hands. Das did this, man after ma, and called on God to help him. That day he saved 75 men. One night, while saving a fellow soldier, a grenade went off, wounding his legs. Instead of calling another medic from cover, he waited five hours for the litter bearer to reach him. Despite suffering severe wounds, Da saw another soldier more critical than himself and got off the stretcher. He demanded the soldiers take the other man. While waiting for the litter bearers to return, Das was struck again in the arm, suffering a compound fracture. Das had courage in the face of danger, courage in the face of temptation, to flee like the rest, courage in the face of loss, and courage in the face of suffering. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Das' actions in the world war earned him the Medal of Honor. Decades later, his true life story was made into a Hollywood film called Hacksaw Ridge. His character was accurately portrayed, not as the platoon's honcho, but rather, as a slim young man bent on doing his duty. No one ever won a war by giving their life, 
his superior officer said in the movie. That statement was far from true, because Jesus did that very thing. When he said, it is finished, he referred to the spiritual war the battle that was initiated in the garden and won on Golgotha's hill. That day he said to you and me, two, go. Fight. Never give up. Never give in. Don't fear. And be courageous. In all things, for the war has already been won. The fourth mandate is to be strong. Let me share with the story of a father and son in the Armenian earthquake. The father says to the son, son, have a good day and remember, no matter what, I will always be there for you. A father said, gazing lovingly into his son's eyes. The child turned away with a smile and ran off to school. Hours later a massive earthquake devastated his son's school. Thousands of casualties were gathered and reported as he hurried to the school grounds. The father passed by the onlookers and stepped up to the demolished remains of the school building. He began digging. One parent shouted, What are you doing? The building isn't secure. You're going to make it worse. But the father was decisive and intentional, I'm digging for my son, he said, brushing off the man's hands. 38 wearying hours after arriving at the school, the father moves a brick and hears a faint voice. Son, is that you? He yells. Papa, it's me. His son yells back through the heaps of rubble, in a muffled yet reassuring voice. The father reached his hand down and said, Come out, son. But his son replied, Let the others out first. I know you will save me. Later, as he held his boy, the father began to think about how selfless his son was. Why would his son stay back while other kids were saved right before his eyes? The answer lies within his boy's confident statement, I knew you would always be there for me. Words that his loving father would never forget. In 1988 the Armenian earthquake killed 25,000 people. Due to a father's strength and unshakable determination, his son and 14 other fortunate kids wouldn't be part of that number. Do you ever feel like a ton of bricks just fell right on top of you? How do you get out from there? Do you wait for the bricks to fall away? Or do you start digging? Be strong is the fourth mandate of manhood. Having faith and confidence in our Father, while also being there, and being strong, for those around us. Life doesn't always go as planned, and God calls us to be strong for that reason. Being strong is more than just physical. Paul is referring to spiritual and mental strength as well. He is speaking of the grit that is required to persevere amidst the challenges of life. Always being there for family means always being there, as the father above routinely told his son. That requires a determined and unshakable inner strength. That's what we do. And of course, knowing that all strength comes from our rock, the Lord only equips us better. Please don't forget to subscribe to Lovebit page, share to someone and leave us your comments. You can also visit the Lovebit Center, Old Budabika Road, Kampala, Uganda, where we offer relationship and marriage counseling and parenting guidance. We also have your dream wedding gown, African table mat, African jeweler as organizer and we also capture moments and turn it into memories with MAKD photography. Call us on 077-666-5112 or 077-616-4914. We shall be waiting for you because at Lovebit Center, love never fails. The fifth mandate is to do everything in love. Luke 10:27 says, He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and, love your neighbor as yourself. The Lord tells us to love him so strongly, passionately, thoughtfully, and deeply for a reason, and that is, the more we know him, 
the more we will naturally love him. Being close to him always means abiding in him. Being in his word daily, setting time to pray in secret places, and obeying what he has commanded us. If a man does these things, he will find that the Lord strengthens him and rejuvenates him by his spirit. Our God gives us the fifth mandate, to do all things in love because that will reveal and reflect him in the world. Everything we choose not to do in love is saying, in effect, you don't need to be seen here. So, we ought to do all things in love. God has commanded it and the priority is loving him with all we have. As I think about loving your neighbor as yourself, a story of a loving uncle comes to mind. Upon hearing his niece's frightened cries and staring at an awful sight, a fiery house, he couldn't wait for the fire department. John rushed into the house. Earlier, his sister had thrown two of her three children from the second floor down to him. But suddenly, she lost her balance and fell helplessly from the roof, unable to safely get her daughter down. John didn't think twice. He rushed in after his niece. He says, then, I got her, I took my shirt off and put it around her face so she wasn't breathing any smoke and then I just carried her out, as fast as I could. Not only did he risk his life, but he also gave her all he had in this case, the very shirt off his back. Derek was seriously burned from the head down, but he said that he would do it again, even if he got burned worse or died trying. When God says to do all things in love and love your neighbor as yourself, that means everyone from your trapped niece to an unruly co-worker. This is tough. How do we love our co-worker who is always complaining? How do we relinquish our rights to venting our anger, even during the heat of an argument? Or have the courage to rush into a fire to save a life? The answer is, you need all these mandates working in the your life. There is nothing more manly than a man with firm conviction, courage and endurance who is marked by love. Now let's sum it up. I hope these five mandates have genuinely impacted you. But honestly, we can read or hear these words, know they are trustworthy, and believe we need to change, but without action, we can expect nothing. Resist the temptation of being a lawnmower Christian. What is that you ask? A lawnmower Christian opens the word, reads a passage or two, checks a box saying they completed the day's reading, and immediately walks away and forgets what they read. This type of person is just mowing down the words to look back and say, I did it, and it looks good. But what they don't see are the weeds, ready to pop up and overtake the healthy grass. James 1,22-24 says, do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and, after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Therefore, be intentional as you read and grow, primarily as you reflect on 1 Corinthians 16,13-14. God doesn't need more men with a head knowledge a degree, a PhD, a master but rather, those whose hearts are filled with the anticipation of moving towards who they were created to be. Men of Action Let me warn you, when we decide to be that man, it invites all kinds of evil from the deceiver, but the word instructs, and empowers, us to resist the devil, and he will flee. So now you know. A Christ-centered, legacy-minded man is a godly man who is alert and on guard at all times. Stands firm in the faith, knowing what and why he believes what he does. Is courageous, moving from fear to trust. Is strong, persisting and persevering through trials. Loves much, first the Lord and then his neighbors. No doubt, it takes work but isn't our God worth it? One more thing. This world will never change until men, like you and me, 
are transformed into who we were created to be before the beginning of time. I don't know about you, but that gets my blood pumping. I hope that you will put into action these five mandates. They will help you see who you are and point you to the purpose the Creator called you to in the beginning. Thank you once again for listening and watching, I urge you to connect with us by subscribing to our channel, like and share it with your friends and to receiving notification of our new encouraging videos. In case you want us to guide, counsel and walk with you in your journey of love, or you want to share your story here on this page, feel free to reach us on our WhatsApp numbers 077-616-4914 or 077-666-5112. May God bless you and let love write your story. This is your boy Prince Sammy the lover boy I will be back for our next episode. Stay blessed and stay in love. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Thank you so much for spending your time to listen to us. I know it will change every setting that you have. For now, don't forget to check on our YouTube page, subscribe, and stay locked for our next episode. Stay blessed and stay in love. Remember, let love write your story.